Well, we can speak now to Kevin Hurley, who's a former Met Detective Chief Superintendent. Uh, good morning to you, Kevin. I don't know if you were in the force at the time of the Stephen Lawrence inquiry, which found the Metropolitan Police to be institutionally racist, but this report seems very much to have the same sort of gravitas and implications. Well, I was in the force at the time of the Lawrence uh, murder and report, in fact, and one of my best friends is the man who solved it and caught the uh, murderers. The first line of that report says it all. It's not the size, it's the inadequate management. What policing suffers from across the whole country is a complete breakdown of leadership. It's a very true phrase, a fish rots from the head. And as someone who works internationally now in some of the most dangerous places in the world, uh, trying to bring some semblance of order, it's always the people at the very top who set the culture and the tone. And what's happened in the Metropolitan Police over the last 15, 20 years, to save money, they have completely hollowed out all the sergeant, inspector, superintendent, chief inspector ranks. So there's not the leadership guidance or coaching there once was when I first joined. Um, and it's all very well for a number of these very senior police officers coming on the, the uh, TV, commenting how it's all, all so awful and so awful. But my message is, they were all at the top of the Met when this has been going on the last few years. So what have they done about it? But a final point, and I think it's very important we need to remember this. At this very moment, there are thousands of police officers out in London attending emergency calls. Some will actually be fighting uh, to arrest people as we speak. They do that because their job is unique. They have to go out and confront wrongdoing. No other job does that. You need to be physically courageous um, and morally strong to do it. If we continue to kick and undermine the police as we are doing, as this report is yet again going to do, and that's not to say there aren't key points in that should be, be looked at and considered, we do so at our peril because I can assure you, coming from a family of nine Metropolitan Police officers, today's report will further undermine and demotivate the police who we expect to go out and protect us. Uh, and I think it's very important, yeah, very um, important, that the horrific murder of uh, by Wayne Cousins of Sarah Everard and the behaviour of that guy Carrick don't stunt us and start to overreact when we've got two different psychopaths there which many organisations have got them up and down the country. The NHS has had countless yeah, scandals. Yeah, but Kevin, so um, Baroness Casey is saying that they're not alone. They're, they're not unique, that there are more and more and more of them, and she can't guarantee that someone else is not in the force who will murder in the future. Well, Eamon, they are alone, because he's the first person in my, my career I've ever known murder and rape and abduct someone. So, yes, there will undoubtedly be bullying misogynist people in the police service, as they're asked well elsewhere. But I don't think we serve anything or any of us well by saying that the, the police is full of cousins and full of carrots, because it's not. And we should remember this. Wayne Cousins was convicted in what the leading judge at the Old Bailey described as the fastest, most far-reaching, most professional uh, murder investigation he'd ever seen. And he commended the entire Metropolitan Police team who did that. So in between throwing the baby out with the bathwater, we should remember Wayne Cousins was caught by excellent detective work. Um, so it's not all bad. The problem you raise, is, you raise, exactly no, let's, let's talk about what the problem is. The problem is there's this massive paradox that, that there seems to be, that the more um, the Metropolitan Police concentrate on reform, um, it seems the more bigoted its officers become. Well, no, they're not, Eamon. I mean, they've always been bigots in the police, uh, as there are in all walks, all walks of life. I used to deal with them. You know, I've, I've disciplined people, even fired people in the past. You get them in all walks of life. What's happened is with the cuts and this push towards, how can I put it, um, rip, meeting whatever perf performance targets or measurement systems are brought in in an attempt to correct behaviours, we we've cut out large numbers of leaders and managers, leaders really, who coach and mentor 
and show people what's the right thing, stand up against what's wrong. And so what you've ended up with is large, large numbers in some areas of people with boys' own cultures who bring the rugby club into the police station, and you see it in the different WhatsApp groups. They're appalling, these WhatsApp groups. But quite frankly, you went through the WhatsApp groups of most um, major organisations. A lot of it would not stand scrutiny, even within GB News. I'm sure there's, there's shameful stuff on some people's WhatsApps. But I think when you point... cut the leadership and manager, management, you, they've cut the leadership and management, they've cut the training, they've cut the development. So people who reach the senior ranks have got about two years less leadership training than I had, far less superintendents, inspectors and sergeants to support them. Uh, and as a net result, people go about doing their own boys' own stuff because we recruit kids. And if they're not set the right values, they end up being kids. But the point is, Kevin, what's different from GB News or any other organisation is that the police are there to protect and to enforce the law. And this report details 363 pages of absolutely abhorrent reading from the sharing of revenge porn <coughs> to uh, the poor treatment of gay people in the wake of the Stephen Port murder, the terrible misogyny exposed uh, towards female recruits, I think four times the number of women leaving the force than men, and a culture at the heart of it of denial, which I have to say, you sound a little bit like, like you share. Well, no, I'm not, because if you remember, I said at the very beginning there are bigots, misogynists and racists in the police, and I've dealt with a good, a good number of them. So I don't. I find the whole, um, the, the latest stuff that's going on absolutely abhorrent, quite appalling. However, I should tell you, I'm very proud to have spent 30 years in the Metropolitan Police, and I still remain proud to have worked with the fine men and women who are in it. But there are, like any other organisation in society, people with those views. And yes, the police are there to protect and prevent crime, which is what they do. What people put on a WhatsApp group is appalling, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's reflected um, in what they do. Yes, there have been sexism, there's been, uh, misog there's been misogyny, there's been racism and bigotry. And I've seen it and I've stopped it. On my very first day when I joined the police in 1979, I physically grabbed hold of a constable in Whitehall and shoved him into a doorway for the way he'd spoken to black people in front of me. I was so outraged. So it still goes on. However, the issue is with the senior leadership for failing to set the correct tone. If you don't have the correct people selected to senior positions, you will yeah. not have the correct tone. Yeah. The way everything's you, operating. You've, you've, uh, rots from the head. Okay, rots from the head. Okay, thank you, Kevin. You obviously hurt. You obviously take this personal. It's obviously a force that you loved and you feel that uh, has a purpose and you feel is being judged uh, wrongly. You think that the, um, the leadership, the guidance and the coaching, the training is not there anymore, that a whole layer has been taken out in terms of management. And I think a lot of people could relate to you uh, with, with all those subjects. So thank you for your experiences, your story. Uh, Kevin Hurley is a former Met Detective, mm. Chief Superintendent. Your views on what he's had yeah. to say this morning. We'd love to hear from you. Get in touch yes. the usual way. It